Hi, I'm Brad and welcome to the first video in this series of really helping you out as we get you ready for this incredible ride that you've embarked on. Here today, we're at 99 Bikes and we're lucky enough to speak to Madison. Today, we're gonna demystify buying a bike and some of the gear that, uh, that you're gonna need that's gonna help out. Let's head on in. All right, gang, well, this is Maddie. Um, uh, Maddie, you're gonna help us out with choosing a bike today. Yep. Right? Where do we start? This is like, there's so much to choose from. Yeah, there is a lot to choose from, but knowing what sort of riding you guys gonna be doing, it definitely helps us narrow it down to the right bike. Well, look, it's, it's mainly roads. Some of the roads are a bit rough. Um, uh, we're gonna be on like a hybrid bike over there. Well, we do have what you meant, like a hybrid. So something that's sort of a good all rounder. So something like this built for mainly roads, but you can go a little bit of like that rougher tracks as well. So it has like the thicker tires, very comfort driven frame as well, made for like that longer distance riding, but not intense performance based. And that's exactly the sort of bike that we're gonna be riding when we're over there. Um, uh, yeah. So I think that's perfect because they've got the, the straight handlebars and stuff too. Tell me, I know there's lots of different types of gears and mechanisms and systems here. What, what should someone be looking for when they're looking in at this stuff? Yeah, if you are in a variety of terrain, it is a good idea to get multiple gears. Mm -hmm. So you can find bikes with maybe one gear or seven gears, but ideally having about 21 to 27 like gears is okay. a good place. Yeah, how, how do people change the gears up and down on, on a bike like this? I always like to use the manual car reference. So if yeah. you're in, you know, going up a steep hill or just starting, starting in a low gear, and then to change gears, so you have to like click a button to go down and then generally click a button to go back up. You do need to be changing gears whilst you're pedalling um, or switch back to the same gear that you started off in. Um, I noticed that this one's got disc brakes. Uh, yeah. So what's the difference between one that's got the disc brakes and one that's got the sort of these type of brakes? So the difference between disc, say having disc brakes or say having the V brakes is that disc brakes do work really well in the wet weather. So if you are riding in a lot of wet weather, they can be quite useful, but it isn't necessary if you're say riding in lots of dry terrain. Okay. Um, they just stop better in the wet. Okay, good to know. Bikes aren't one size fits all. So this is where we're gonna play with some sizing just to see well, what bike is going to fit me and my frame? Yeah, so this is our bike fit jig where we measure inseam, torso, height and then arm length. Perfect, that's all done. So I go type this into the computer and then it tells me exactly what frame size you need. Alright, cool. Ooh. So whilst Maddie's going and working out all the different sizes for me and working out which bike is going to suit me, it's important to recognise that uh, over in Thailand when you're there, the crew at Hands Across the Water are also experts at fitting your bike. So they're going to sort out the right bike for you whilst you're on the ride. This here is so that you buy the right bike for all of your training during the lead up. So if you had the perfect bike, Brad, and it was all built to spec, this yes. is what it would look like. Okay. Obviously a lot of numbers. So we've been trained how to read it, use the data. So you are actually ideally in an extra large frame. Okay. So 59 centimetre, which isn't too surprising because you are quite tall and you do have quite long legs as well. So that's the one that would best suit your geometries. All right. So we've got to find an extra large frame for you. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so now that we've got the bike sorted, what other things should we be checking out? So obviously you do need a helmet. That's probably one of the biggest things that you need when riding a bike. Yeah. Uh, things like bottle cages, shoes, yeah. yes. cleats. Well, let, let's go have a look. Well, you can have a lot of fun with helmets. Obviously we have quite a lot on display and some of them will be appropriate, some of them won't be. We definitely recommend trying on a few different brands. Yes. Uh, depending on your price point and preferences. So we've got ones with your advisors, which yes. will probably be the most popular for the style of riding that you're doing, because yeah. you have, you know, cut off the sun, a lot of ventilation in the heat of mm -hmm. Thailand as well. You can get your lighter road bike helmets, would still be very suitable as mm -hmm. well for the style of riding. Because again, lighter, a bit more expensive, so not necessarily needed, but some people do prefer the comfort. Yes. So probably biggest point is comfort is king. Hear that? Comfort is king. 
king. If you're oh, riding bad. long days in the saddle, yeah. you need a helmet that's not going to give you a headache, yeah. no matter how good it looks. So I'll give you a helmet to try on, Brad. It's a pretty basic, all adjustable. So once it's on your head, you tighten this dial to get it nice and snug. So there it's snug go. enough that you can sort of shake your head around, doesn't yep. shift back and forth. No. And then you should have be able to fit two fingers in between your eyebrows and the top of your helmet. And that's how far it should sit down on your head. With the straps, you should be able to tighten them and fit no more than three fingers in between your chin and your straps. And that's to stop it from coming back off your helmet. Exactly. So this is a good fit. <laughs> Looks like a perfect helmet for you. <laughs> All right, there we go. This is the right fit. Done. <laughs> so now that we've picked out the helmet, what's next? What else do you need? So one thing I would recommend for the style of riding you're doing, Brad, is definitely some nicks or padded pants. So these can obviously be pretty intimidating, but definitely as an ex like someone who started out as just wearing regular leggings and then moving to this, I can say I've never looked back since I've gotten them. Yeah. Um, so the main thing that you're looking for is something with a bit of padding. Mm -hmm. uh, as you spend more money, the technology does get better, yes. so it's more contoured. So the more contoured it is, the better fitting, the more blood flow, less numbing, more comfortable on long rides. Yeah, okay. And do you know, Brad, that they're designed to not wear underwear with? Yes, I hope so. So what happens, <laughs> yeah. what happens if you've got a pair of jocks underneath your, your necks? Yeah, it can sort of defeat the purpose yeah. of them, but you will I've, get quite a lot of chafing. I've heard about chafing, yeah. It is pretty rampant yeah. when you wear underwear with it. Okay. So, um, so definitely when you try them on, please wear underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you're on the bike. All right, team, so, so <laughs> needed to pick up on that. When trying them on, wear your underwear. <laughs> All right, when you're on your bike, do not wear underwear underneath these. All right, important message for you there. So when trying it on, mm -hmm. what are we looking for? How do we know whether we've got one that's fitting well versus one that's just too big or too small? Yeah, so looking for it to be quite snug around. Yes. I would say if you've ever worn leggings, so I don't know if you have, <laughs> that would be like the best indicator. Uh, or like swimmers as well, um, like a wetsuit, so not pinching at any points, yes. um, but not loose. We have lots of excess material because yeah. the excess material will bunch and yeah. start chafing. Okay. And obviously pinching, it's gonna cut off blood flow. Okay, cool. So we want it on nice and tight. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we don't want it pinching. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, we don't want it flappy. Exactly. Uh, hear that, we don't want it flappy. Um, uh, and then that's gonna be a good fit. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so now that we've got the bike, We've got the helmet, we've got the Lycra. What's next on our list? Yep, so the other thing I'd recommend for you, Brad, is some shoes and some cleats. Okay, cool. Obviously having a shoe with the cleat on the base of the shoe means you can clip into the pedal, mm -hmm. which means that you do have a much more efficient pedal stroke. Yes. So you're not having to always, you know, place your foot in the right position. It's already there, ready to go. Yes. So you can just put as much power as you want. You're not gonna slide off the pedal. Yep. As well as say when you're climbing up a hill, you can also lift up on the pedal at the same time as pushing down. So you are reserving a lot of energy to be used for those longer distances. Okay. And it will be a much comfier ride as well. The ones I would recommend would be more of like the touring and trekking style. Mm -hmm. So generally we do start with the shoe. Yes. Because that will then dictate what sort of pedal you might get. Okay. So the type of shoes that would be best would be something like these ones. Mm -hmm. So you can see that they look like a normal runner. Yes. Um, they do have a very slight amount of flex, mm -hmm. um, but are still quite stiff that they are very efficient. Yes. Um, but you can get on and off the bike and walk around because the cleat does sit inside this place here. Yes. So you're not going to damage any cleat or slip around on it. You're going to get lots of grip from yes. the outside and it's going to be very comfortable. Okay. Um, you can still clip in. Mm -hmm. So with this type of shoe, you do need an SPD style of pedal. Um, so the SPD pedals have these cleats, which then sit on the base of the shoe, and then they will clip in to these sort of pedals. Okay. Some pedals can get double-sided, so both sides are clipped in, mm -hmm. or you can get some that are single-sided, where one side looks like a normal pedal and one side clips in. Okay. And, and what would you recommend? Uh, if you're just starting out, having one side as a normal flat pedal, one size clip in can be quite good. So yes. you can just pedal like a normal bike, then clip in and say unclip when you want to start stopping, keep pedaling, and then put your foot down. That's a good way to ease your way into it at least. Cool, all right, I like that. So, so team, what we're hearing 
is essentially the shoe that looks kind of normal is probably the best description as opposed to something that... Yeah, uh, you don't need one of these. All right, so as opposed to something that looks like a proper cyclist shoe. That said, if you are going to be getting right into cycling, it's probably still a good option, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's depending on the terrain. Yes. On like road, perfect. If you say get off the bike quite a lot and yep. walk, um, because of where the cleat will sit, it does sit out and yes. it could cause damage to your shoe. Okay, there we go. So essentially for you know, most of us, an everyday shoe is going to be good. Um, we get the cleat and then the pedal that's sort of double-sided. So one side of the pedal is just normal everyday uh, riding where you could kind of do in your runners. Uh, the other side of the pedal clips into the, uh, the shoe. And in one of the other videos, I'm going to teach you how to clip in and out really, really easily and do some real tra awesome training uh, around using the cleats and how that all works. So we will get into a bit more detail later on. Now, bike computers, I guess, right? Bike computers, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. We've got a couple. Sweet. There are some, so we've got at the moment just the GPS ones. Mm -hmm. So these ones will connect up to the satellites in the sky, means yeah. they're very accurate. and You don't need any wires or cables going down. Mm -hmm. We can also get in a wired one, which yes. is about $30. Yes. And it'll do things like trip distance, total distance, which it can be good, quite good to track. I know when I was touring touring, just knowing yeah. how far you've gone how far you've got left. Yes, yeah. Maybe if you want to break some records of how fast you can go between yeah. a certain distance can be quite motivating. Right. Or with your GPS enabled ones, you can also upload them to say a website and you can even see where you've gone yeah. and every point that you've been and create right. like a bit of a story for yourself. Cool. And things like uh, monitoring you know, your, your RPM, so how often you're pedaling and monitoring your heart rate, yeah. uh, things like that. So they're, they're able to do all that? Definitely. So yeah. some you can get in bundles that will come with a heart rate monitor and an RPM sensor. We yes. call them a, a cadence sensor. So yes. it's like yeah, how fast you're pedaling. Yes. Um, or you can buy them separately as well. Yeah. You can also buy ones that will just connect to your phone. Yeah. So say if you want to use your phone, but keep in mind it does eat up a lot of battery. There we go. Mm. Cool, cool. So again, a couple of little bits of gold in there. Um, uh, with the heart rate monitor and with the cadence, uh, in the training videos that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to refer to heart rate and cadence um, uh, and where you want that to be uh, so as that you're getting maximum effort out of your training. So um, good idea to pick up a bike computer. Uh, obviously, one, you can show off all your training. All right, and that's important on all your socials, um, uh, but, uh, but also some real training around heart rate and cadence that we will be talking about a bit later on. All right, so Maddie, what one do you recommend? Probably the one that I would recommend is the Brighton Rider 15. Perfect. GPS, it'd be the easiest to use. Awesome, we like easy. <laughs> yeah. Magic, done. All right, team, got to have a serious conversation with you, and this is around chafing, all right? This stuff here, butt cream, you need to get some. And it's really important that you do take this with you over to Thailand. You're going to be riding anywhere between 500 to 1200 kilometers. And believe you me, this will be the difference between enjoying it and not enjoying it. All right, Maddie. Well, hey, thanks heaps for all your help today. All Looks good like we are, yeah. we are set. We're ready to go. Gang, now that you've got your bike, you've got all your gear, you're ready for the, uh, you're ready for the big ride ahead. Um, uh, of course, if there's anything in this video that has still been overwhelming, uh, the local crew down at 99 Bikes, happy to help out. Uh, or of course, you can flick me an email as well. I'm here to help. All right, let's go. Yeah.